Okay, the last thing we're going to talk about in chapter 3 is acids, bases, pH, and buffers. Okay, so if we take a look at the water in my water cup, I usually have my water bottle. Today next to me I have a nice little Elsa and Anna cup filled with water. If we take a look at all the water molecules in that cup of water, they don't all necessarily at one time exist as water the way we know it, or H2O. What can happen on occasion is that water molecules can sort of dissociate. So a hydrogen atom in a hydrogen bond between two water molecules can actually shift from one water molecule to another. And I've shown this at the bottom of this particular slide right here. So here we have two water molecules. There's one right there, second one right there. And this is the nice little hydrogen in question. So this hydrogen is going to be hydrogen bonded to this electronegative oxygen on the left hand side. On occasion, that hydrogen atom can sort of leave its electron behind. Remember, let's review, a hydrogen atom exists essentially as one proton and one electron, right? One proton, one electron. There are no, for the most part, in most of the hydrogen atoms, there are no neutrons in the atomic nucleus. We have one proton and one electron. So the two are going to separate and the hydrogen atom is going to leave its electron behind and it's going to be transferred simply as an individual proton or what we call a hydrogen ion symbolizes H plus because it's lost one electron so it's lost that um, one negative charge it becomes slightly positively charged it's a charged particle so we call it an ion so it's a hydrogen ion H plus it leaves its electron behind and it goes and it attaches itself to that other water molecule with which it was originally hydrogen bonded. So the molecule that gained that one extra proton is called the hydronium ion or H3O plus. And then the molecule that lost that proton is going to be called our hydroxide ion. The electron that was left behind stays there so the hydroxide ion has a negative charge. Okay. Oftentimes, though, this is kind of complicated. And as biologists, we want to keep things sort of simple. So one way to abbreviate this particular reaction that I've shown you guys at the bottom of this slide is simply to say that one water molecule, or H2O, is going to dissociate into a proton, or an H+, a hydrogen ion, and the hydroxide ion, sort of taking out one water molecule on both sides of the chemical reaction just to make things simple. But keep in mind that this hydrogen ion, H+, doesn't actually exist by itself. It's going to be attached to that other water molecule forming that hydronium ion. We just ignore that other water molecule and consider it just an H+, on this side. All right, so now that we've established that, water is essentially in this a state of dynamic equilibrium in which water molecules are going to dissociate at the same rate at which they are being formed. And actually the number of water molecules that is dissociated at any given time in a body of water is teeny tiny. It's like one in 500 million. So most of them exist as normal water molecules, but you will have one on occasion, one water molecule that dissociates into a um, hydroxide ion and a hydrogen ion. So statistically very, very rare, but this rate of dissociation of these water molecules has a great effect on organisms. And so the changes in concentrations of both the hydrogen ion and the hydroxide ion can, dr can, ugh, can drastically affect the chemistry of a cell. It's kind of like a nice little balance. So usually I use my hands in lecture, but today I've made myself a nice little teeter-totter here. On one side, we have our hydrogen ion. On the other side, we have our hydroxide ion. Anytime that you see these ions with the brackets around them, that essentially means molar concentration. So this is showing you the concentration of hydrogen ions, and this is the concentration of hydroxide ions. In life, there has to be a nice little balance between these two. And there are different things that can shift this balance and can affect that balance. And that's what we're going to talk about next. If we take a look at pure water, in pure water, the concentrations of 
hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions are going to be equal, right? And this is essentially what we have when we have a neutral solution. Pure water is going to be neutral. So we look at the bottom of this particular slide. Down here in that middle beaker, we have equal concentrations of the hydrogen ion and the hydroxide ion. This is neutral. When you add certain solutes that are either called acids or bases to pure water, you can shift this balance one way or another. So modifying or adding these certain solutes, which are called acids and bases, can modify these concentrations of hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions. And as biologists, chemists also, we use something called the pH scale to describe whether a solution is going to be either acidic or basic. All right? If you have a basic solution, as we have in the beaker on the left, in a basic solution, your hydrogen ion concentration is going to be really low. And because there is this inverse relationship between, let's see where to put this, um, between the hydrogen ions and the hydroxide ions, if you are going to decrease the hydrogen ion concentration, that is naturally going to increase the hydroxide ion concentration. That's for a basic solution. Now, if you have an acidic solution, it essentially does the opposite. You're going to tilt your little teeter-totter this way. In an acidic solution, your hydrogen ion concentration is going to be very high. Respectively, inversely, your hydroxide ion concentration is going to be really low. All right, so an acid is going to be any substance that's going to increase our hydrogen ion concentration. And a base is going to be the opposite. It's any substance that's going to reduce the hydrogen ion concentration of a solution. If it reduces the hydrogen ion, ion concentration, naturally it's going to increase the hydroxide ion concentration. All right, so let's talk a little bit about this pH scale. It gets a little bit complicated. So in any aqueous solution at 25 degrees Celsius, the product, or multiplying, the hydrogen ion concentration, hydroxide ion concentration, is always going to be constant and can be written as 10 to the negative 14. So that means that the hydrogen ion concentration times the hydroxide ion concentration must equal 10 to the negative 14. For example, in pure water, right? again, our teeter-totter is going to be perfectly balanced. So these two concentrations must be equal. To get these two concentrations equal, and they must equal 10 to the negative 14 under standard conditions, hydrogen ion concentration must be 10 to the negative 7. Hydroxide ion concentration must be 10 to the negative 7. They have to be equal and balanced. Now, when we say, hey, this is the pH of this particular solution, that can be defined as the negative logarithm of the hydrogen ion concentration. When we're talking about pH. Even though there's an inverse relationship between the two, pH is only concerned with the hydrogen ion concentration. All right? So we can write the pH two different ways. The pH is either going to be the negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration. That can be tricky to think about if math isn't quite your thing. An easier way to look at it is if you know the hydrogen ion concentration, right? you know that that equals 10 to the negative something, and that exponent is automatically going to give you the pH, as you see written here on the right. So going back to our example of a neutral solution. In a neutral solution, hydrogen ion concentration is going to be 10 to the negative 7, and it has to equal the hydroxide ion concentration, also 10 to the negative 7. So if we know in a neutral solution our hydrogen ion concentration is 10 to the negative 7, hydrogen ion concentration here is going to be 10 to the negative 7, and if this exponent gives us the pH, we know then that the pH has to be a pH of 7, and that is in fact true. Any solutions that are acidic are going to have pH values that are less than 7, right? Acidic, remember, high hydrogen ion concentration. Basic solutions are going to have pH values that are greater than 7 and are going to have a low hydrogen ion concentration. Most biological fluids have a pH value somewhere between 6 and 8, right around neutral, right around that level teeter-totter where both concentrations are equal with the hydrogen ion and the hydroxide ion. All right, here's an example of what the pH scale looks like. So it goes all the way from 0 to 14. 
any acidic solution is going to have a low pH. Kind of tricky to think about, right? Because again, pH talks about the hydrogen ion concentration. In an acidic solution, hydrogen ion concentration is going to be high, but the pH number on the pH scale is going to be low. So things like battery acid, lemon juice, these have a very low pH, 1, 2, 3, etc. But they have high hydrogen ion concentration. When you get to neutral, right, balance between hydrogen and hydroxide ions, that's a pH of 7, it's going to be pure water, and most biological uh, solutions. And then if you took the scale the other way, you decrease your hydrogen ion concentration, you increase your hydroxide ion concentration, and you get to those high pHs. And these solutions are going to be basic. Things like ammonia and bleach are very, very basic. Okay, one more thing to note on this pH scale. So the concentration of these hydrogen and hydroxide ions can vary greatly in a variety of different solutions, right? There's a huge scale, and we sort of shrink the scale together so that we're not dealing with really large numbers, and instead we're just going from 0 to 14. Thing to keep in mind, that this is a logarithmic scale, right? On the previous two slides ago, we talked about logarithms, right? And this logarithm is base 10, 10 to whatever exponent we're talking about. That means, if this is a, the pH scale is in a logarithmic scale, base 10, that means that between each pH value, there's a tenfold difference in our hydrogen ion concentration. So for example, pH of 6 right here has 10 times more hydrogen ions than a pH of 7. Also, pH of 13 has a thousand times less hydrogen ions than a pH of 10. So for each time you switch between one of these values on the pH scale, that's a tenfold change. So 10 times 10 times 10 gives you a thousand. Okay, there are certain solutions that sort of help to maintain a certain pH and prevent huge fluctuations in the pH of things like the blood, for example. The internal pH of most living cells must remain close to that neutral value of 7. And so many things, like your bloodstream, are going to have substances in there that act as buffers. Or a buffer is going to be any substance that minimizes changes in the concentrations of the hydrogen ion and the hydroxide ion in solution. So even if you were to add a strong acid or a strong base, the buffer in that solution would prevent this teeter-totter from growing crazy and it might just fluctuate a little bit around that level point or wherever the pH of that solution started. Most buffer solutions contain a weak acid and its corresponding base, which can combine reversibly with hydrogen ions. Okay, So if all of a sudden the cell is exposed to high hydrogen ion concentration, the buffers are going to absorb those to sort of neutralize the solution. Or if uh, a base is added and the hydrogen ion concentration is drastically decreased, the buffers are going to add some more hydrogen ions to that solution, again, to minimize any really, really drastic fluctuations.